Central Minnesota is what I call where I live. You gotta like the cold up here a little bit, you know, 20 below, we'll, we'll see that. Been married for 34 years now. Um, two boys, they both are on the farm here with us. Everybody's involved 100% with our family operation. We've always been a registered herd. We've embraced new technology and everything. We've done some showing in the past. We've had some cattle out at World Dairy Expo. Lately, we've gone more to the genomic side of things. I think the embryo work and everything we do on this farm, it's the most productive work we're doing on our farming practice all the way around. We farm a thousand acres of corn and soybeans and alfalfa, but my embryo work, my genetic progress that we can keep making in this game has been our best return for our, our family farm so far. We want to keep the family farm going. You have to work the assets you have on your own dairy. I'm a guy who's not afraid to invest in an animal or into a cow family that I believe in to see if we can get a return on that investment. It's hard to pay for a really good cow just based on milk sales. So why not capitalize on her offspring or something and try to generate some additional dollars there, which the registered Holstein cow has allowed me to do that. Our embryo transfer work around here involves both conventional flushing and some IVF work. We go through and we genomic test our heifers. Then we start to look at the top 10% of our heifers and not necessarily the highest ones are the ones you're looking at. You know, I, I like to look at heifers that have unique traits that may be something we can emphasize and go forward. A2A2 is something we've been concentrating on here for a couple years. We have uh, identified it in certain milk and it's easier on the digestive system of people that are lactose intolerant. So, of course, we all want to be able to have a product that everybody can drink and enjoy the benefits of. So now we're turning around and we're concentrating on A2A2 to try to make sure every mating has a chance of being an A2A2 mating. Some of these heifers that have these desirable secondary traits, so to speak, to make a product that can make a higher quality cheese or, or be more friendly to the consumer, we have to look at those heifers and maybe she's not the highest ranking heifer in our program, but she's got all those other traits we're looking for. We have to move her up the ladder in our selection for who we're gonna flush and go forward with. They started flushing back in the early 90s, so that some of these techniques are just built over the years. There are definitely advantages to the IVF and there's advantages to the conventional. Both of them are tools, so it's, they can be used intertwined. Show cattle are still important, how they look still important, but the genomics has allowed that tool to be able to select a little more for that farm and get the productivity a little more for that farm. It's still very crucial to have a registered Holstein because cow families is where it's at. Spencer, he goes on cow families when he does it. He doesn't go just on numbers. It's a lot of cow families that he goes with and that's what makes the value in those to him and therefore can translate onto what's marketable for him. We're on the left side now. So we'll take the embryos out of that side and take them back in the laboratory and find them. Hopefully. <laughs> yep. We try to get involved in all the programs with Holstein USA. That's really where everybody finds me when they're looking, is they made contact or looked at a list on Holstein USA, and that made them order a pedigree, which gave them my address, which gave them my phone number, and the next thing you know, they're coming right to my door to generate dollars for our family. There's good cows all over the country. They weren't put on this earth just to give milk. They were put on this earth to maybe reproduce and using technology to reproduce at a higher rate. I think the key to being good is being precise, no matter how long you've done it. But the, the fun part of embryology is always when you, you put the dish on here and you start finding embryos. We'll take them up to over 100 magnification to tell how good they are. The first one looks like it has some promise here, even at the low mag. I couldn't imagine taking some of these really good heifers or really good young cows of ours and just being happy with one calf hopefully every 13 months, you know? Yeah, it's an animal that we've been working with over the last couple of years that did IVF the whole time. She's approaching 200 animals being registered out of her. So her production has multiplied that much with just one animal. 
Basically, we're gonna load up the two embryos we're gonna transfer out of this flush. I load them in straws here, and we're gonna load them up to take them out to the recipients. All right, we should be good there. We're ready to go. One hundred percent of my success on what we're doing here is because of the registered Holstein cow. She's got the size and the capability and the genetic diversity that we can make her adapt to whatever the markets want us to do. The embryo work we do today is gonna to be what we're hoping is in demand three years from now. If you're in a fluid milk market, breed for pounds. If you're a creamery or wherever you sell your milk in the part of the world you're at, they want high components. Well, with the Holstein cow, you can select those bowls to give you that really high component milk. And it's the registered cow that has turned around and made every cow better.